Welcome to Bench to Bedside, a weekly series of live conversations about recent advances in cancer, from the research bench to treatment at the patient's bedside. And now, your host and the director of the University of Kansas Cancer Center, Dr. Roy Jensen. Hello, I'm Dr. Roy Jensen. Today's guests are Drs. Mary Markavich and Dr. Go Chen Yu, uh, cancer researchers at the University of Kansas Cancer Center. Both also hold the distinction of being recipients of the V Foundation Early Career Investigator Award, a matching grant from the V Foundation and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Dr. Markavich, um, could you receive this grant back in 2017? Could you tell us a little bit about this award and why it is unique? So the V Foundation has been around since 1993, and it was started uh, by uh, the basketball coach, Jim Valvano. And since 1993, they have given more than $225 million in um, cancer research funding grants. But this uh, particular grant was unique because it was given in combination by the, uh, the V Foundation, the Chiefs and the Hunt Family Foundation, as well as the University of Cancer Health Center, Health Systems and the Cancer Center. So all together, uh, the V Foundation donated $100,000 and then the Cancer Center came up with $50,000 and the Chiefs also donated $50,000. And so that was this unique partnership um, that wanted to fund a, a cancer grant uh, here at uh, University of Kansas Cancer Center, and it was a competitive grant, so I put in an application, and they picked me last year, or 2017. So, uh, could you tell us a little bit about the research uh, that you did with this, uh, with these funds? Yeah. So, in my lab, uh, we're working on natural killer cells, which are a type of immune cell that can actually go find and destroy cancer cells. Uh, and then there's a lot of interest in using these cells therapeutically as treatment for cancer treatment, but uh, they're still not, we still haven't figured out how to make them really good killers, so we're trying to figure out how to make them better. And in my lab, we had found that there is a particular protein that whether it's on the NK cells or not, can influence how well they can kill cancer cells. And so we're testing that in preclinical models to see whether we can manipulate that expression to make the NK cells kill the cancer cells better. That's pretty exciting. Immuno-oncology obviously mm -hmm. is one of the most exciting um, uh, aspects of cancer research these days. So Dr. Yu, you received this award in 2018. What Could you tell us about your research uh, focus and how the V Foundation Award is helping to move uh, your studies forward? Um, so my research focus is, is uh, stomach cancer, which is um, uh, usually when people have stomach cancer, they're diagnosed at a later stage and when the treatment is, is uh, uh, infective. So my research is to find the biomarkers which can identify the bi gastri gastric cancer as early as possible. Uh, so um, my lab has been studying the microbes and so we're going to study the microbes in the stomach and to study their interaction, e interaction of microbe, microbe interaction and also interaction between microbe and also human to study the, um, the etiology of cancer development. So why some people got cancer, why some people don't get cancer. And also we are hoping that we potentially find a biomarker which can identify the people who's most likely to develop cancer. Um, so, uh, so my research is, uh, is, is potential will help people to prevent gastric cancer. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Pro probably many people have not heard of uh, the microbe known as Helicobacter, uh, but could you maybe tell us a little bit about that uh, organism and its relationship to gastric cancer? So Helicobacter probably uh, is, is a major causative risk factor for gastric cancer, and it's well established. It's like smoking for lung cancer. So um, 
so people know that when people have helicobacter pylori, they're more likely to get cancer, gastric cancer. But not everybody who get helicobacter pylori mm -hmm. would get gastric cancer. So it's like smoking. Not every smoker would get lung cancer. So my lab is basically, we're going to study helicobacter pylori in details. So not all the helicobacter pylori, uh, pylori are equal. Some bacter, helicobacter pylori are more gastrocarcinogenic, which means uh, some strains are more likely to cause cancer than other strains, helicobacter strains. So and it's very common that one person could have multiple helicobacter pylori strains. So my lab has to been studying, you know, to look at how many different helicobacter pylori strains in each person and look at how they interact with other bacteria. It's very common that people have helicobacter pylori and also lots of other bacteria. bacteria. So, um, so we are studying uh, interaction within helicobacter pylori strings and also interaction between helicobacter pylori and also other bacteria. And we're hoping that we're studying these interactions to, uh, to find the, the biomarkers, you know, maybe some strains like H. pylori which, uh, uh, you know, when, when, when people have those kind of strains, they're more likely to get cancer. So we are uh, hoping that we are uh, finding additional biomarkers to prevent and also uh, diagnose gastric cancer. Well, thanks. If you're just joining us on Bench to Bedside, we're talking with Drs. Mary Markevich and Go Chen Yu and learning about their cancer research. And Alicia Miller is here in the studio to take your questions. Remember to share this link with people you think might benefit from our discussion. Use the hashtag bench to bedside. So what is the role of your research in understanding uh, cancer, Dr. Markiewicz? Um, so we're really interested in understanding how cancer cells evade the immune system because the immune system can generally kill, target, uh, kill uh, tumor cells. And so really that's our focus is figuring out how immune cells can kill tumor cells and then doing our best to make the best killers um, of tumor cells. Mm -hmm. and, and how does your work focus on the relationship between microbes and cancer? So um, my work is the, the main goal is to examine the risk factor for gastric cancer, so to, uh, to study why these people are more likely to get gastric cancer because of what? Because of they are smoking or because they have helicobacter pylori or because they have other bacteria. So my uh, goal is to see if they, they have, they're more likely to have gastric cancer is because they have certain bacteria. We know already, we already know that helicobacter pylori is, is a major risk factor for gastric cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to see if there's other bacteria which can also cause gastric cancer, or maybe predict who's more likely to get a gastric cancer. So my research is, is uh, potentially will help people to prevent gastric cancer and have early diagnosis of gastric cancer. So, um, that's, uh, so many people um, are, have helicobacter, as you said. It, if you're found to have helicobacter pylori, is there a way to get rid of it? Uh, this is, has been uh, a very a major research focus in a lot of countries like uh, Japan, Korea. They are doing this. this they're trying to get rid of helicobacter pylori. Uh, but there are some concerns, you know, because you are, have extensive use antibiotics, so you have some side effect. You probably also kill good bacteria. So um, uh, studies ongoing and. Uh, you know, and uh, it's, it's there, there is a way getting helicobacter pylori. Uh, my opinion, this is just my opinion, is that uh, there are some people probably really benefit from getting rid of helicobacter pylori if their strains are really causing gastric cancer or they are more likely to get, get a gastric cancer because of, of other factors, you know, known factors or unknown factors, you know, like family history or smoking or, you know, or, or some kind of behavior. Those people are probably more likely to benefit from getting rid of helicobacter pylori, but I don't think it's 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 kind of a good idea for everybody who have helicobacter pylori to uh, get extensive treatment of antibiotics. Okay, Alicia, it looks like we have a question from our audience. We do. Um, the question is: Does diet impact your risk for gastric cancer? 
Um, it's there's some evidence. It really depends on the population. So in Japan, people have studied have shown that if you have more uh, vegetable intake, would lower your uh, your gastric cancer risk. And if you have uh, less intake of uh, hot drinks, uh, you would uh, lower your risk of gastric cancer. Um, there's still so much need to be done. Diet is really a very complicated factor to study. So <laughs> it used to be in, in Western countries that gastric cancer was quite common, and now it's, it's decreased significantly, uh, but it still remains high in, in uh, Japan and other parts of the Far East. Do, do we understand why, why that is? Uh, it's probably years of refrigerator, you know, an increase of hygiene here, and uh, there might be other factors, you know, like population or, or um, diet or behavior mm -hmm. or, um, or other factors. And also here in in uh, in USA, there's a dramatic de decrease of Helicobacter pylori, which mm -hmm. has been uh, associated with decrease of gastric cancer. So in China, gastric uh, H pylori is very common. Uh, it's probably more than ninety percent of people would have Helicobacter pylori, mm -hmm. and uh, the, which is the main risk factor of gastric cancer. Uh, but it's decreasing in China as well as in Japan and uh, Korea. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Markevich, what is, uh, what is the motivation for your research? Why did you go into cancer research? Um, so, I, t to be honest, I find immune cells fascinating and the fact that they can go and find cancer and kill it in a much uh, more specific manner than a lot of the chemotherapies we use. Uh, perhaps um, find more of the lone cancer cells that are just around in the body and I just um, I just find it fascinating and love to figure out how to make T cells and NK cells kill tumor cells better. It's kind of a great job when people actually pay you <laughs> to do the stuff that you would do for free, you know? Yeah. That's kind of, yeah, we just can't let on that it, we know right? about that. Dr. Yu, what about you? What motivates you in your work? So my motivation is that my research could potentially help a lot of people. Uh, help people to prevent cancer and also help people to diagnose cancer as early as possible because we know cancer treatment is very um, challenging and the main secret is that if you could uh, get uh, diagnosed as early as possible so you could get rid of the tumor in the early stage. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, this is my ma major motivation. So we're nearing the end of, of today's uh, episode, and I'd like to ask uh, both of you, what, what are your final thoughts uh, that you'd like to share uh, with our viewers today? Um, so I would really like to uh, point out in, uh, the usefulness of basic science. So we're doing preclinical studies, uh, and it, it takes sometimes years to get that to, the cl to what we find to the clinic, but it's extremely important. Um, we need to fund it, and um, so like the, the newest immunotherapies that are out there now, you know, those were started as general questions just trying to figure out how immune cells worked, and that was 20 or 25 years ago, and now we've got great therapies in the clinic. Uh, so just, I know it's hard to have patience with us figuring out the basic science, but it does pay off. Yeah. And Dr. Yu? I, I really want to thank the Foundation to get me started. This is my first major funding. And uh, this is really getting me started my journey of cancer research and uh, help me to build up knowledge and resources and also a team to, um, uh, to, to uh, do some research on cancer prevention and cancer treatment. Well, I can't think of any better note uh, <laughs> to wind up our uh, session on. I want to thank our viewers uh, today and I want to thank our guests, Dr. McKavich and Dr. Uh, Yu and also Alicia Miller. Uh, thank you for moderating. And uh, that's it uh, for today. To learn more about KU Cancer Center's research efforts, visit the Cancer Research and Education section of KUCancerCenter.org. We appreciate you joining us, and we invite you to tune in next Wednesday at 10 a.m. for Bench to Bedside. Thanks for watching.